So let's talk about what you're doing today. Okay, so first of all, this is technically a Dollar Tree craft. No way. Why is that on the title? So, I'm, I don't know, actually. It's okay. Oh, wait, it is in the title. <laughs> I would never do a 30 like that. I knew. If it's a do Listen, if we're using Dollar Tree items, we are going to let y'all know. We're letting you know. And honestly, if we can use Dollar Tree, we, we do. We do. Because we know that y'all love it. And this um, stainless steel tumbler from Dollar Tree has been like, Probably my favorite three to five dollar section item. I was about item. to say it has been consistent for us. Yeah, we've used it like a in lot. different mm -hmm. type of crafts and tumbler. Like we've done a resin tumbler with it. We did just HTV on it. So I just yeah. I love it. It's special. Yeah. So you're going to love getting to figure out how you're doing it. And Alicia, mm -hmm. give us a little sneak peek. Like, it, should I be if I'm watching? Should I be scared to do this? Absolutely not. No. And I think what I think happens. Yeah. Is People see an unfamiliar, like, ingredient. I was about to say, I'm, there's some stuff over there that I'm like... Yeah, so we're using ferric chloride today, which sounds really fancy. And it is. It's really... Where I mean, do you get it? At Amazon. You can just get it on Amazon. Yeah. And um, there's lots of different brands. The brand, like, doesn't change from brand to brand. It's just a chemical. Okay. Um, and so a lot of people think they can just use, like, glass etching cream mm. on stainless steel, and it's not because it's a different... Totally it's, different formula. Right, different components go like, into it. So, to so different. The ferric chloride can actually, um, it works on like brass and copper. Ooh. And I wish I, I don't know what happened. We had this little cute little tray that said, oh, hippies welcome here. Yeah. And it was brass and we yes. etched it with ferric chloride. So you can use this to etch lots of different things. This is good to have in your back pocket when you're not doing your regular etching. Yes, for sure. I think etching is like so not talked about enough. Yes. Because the durability, mm -hmm. your lifespan, and so much more with this technique. And it's classy looking. It's very classy. It's very classy. It's not like super like crazy and colorful. It's kind it's of subtle. It's not vinyl. You know, it's yeah. you're using vinyl, but that's not going to be your end result. Right. So I think if you've never done this, you're going to learn a lot today. I agree. My second tutorial that you're really getting today is a really great understanding of how to truly make a stencil. Yes. If you've never made a stencil with your Cricut, stick with us you're gonna love getting to see alicia build the stencil mm -hmm. bring it together and it's gonna be so awesome and, and i'll say this time that i did it the correct way y'all i used to make some like you know how i do my stencils the old way uh, i'll show y'all how i do it the old way but i'm gonna show you how to do it the right way oh today. my gosh okay i love that this is very science lab ish and y'all know about that um if you are wanting to we've i feel like some people get the etching um, and like the citrus strip kind of confused. Yes. So this is not like the citrus strip. The citrus strip is when you take a powder coated tumbler, we apply actual citrus strip to it, and then it like etches the tumbler. This is going to be actually etching the surface of the stainless steel tumbler. So we're taking a standard stainless steel tumbler. Now this is the Dollar Tree $5 tumbler that I'm obsessed with. We have used these for so many different projects. And so this is what we're gonna be etching on today. So let me kind of go over everything that you are going to need and why you're gonna need those certain items. So to start with, obviously you're gonna need your tumbler. Um, I have our Star Mask by Starcraft. This is stencil vinyl. Now, you do not have to use stencil vinyl. You can use like scrap regular adhesive vinyl. I would not recommend permanent vinyl just because it's gonna stick a lot more intensely i guess sure um you just need it to stick enough and so lay down flatly so you don't want to have to use like your good permanent vinyl if you have some like old removable vinyl or stencil vinyl laying around yeah. that will work perfectly now my secret is that i just like to use a color of vinyl i accidentally bought i think that's a good idea uh, i mean and it, it will idea. work great yeah um and you've I've never had any issues right. yet, and I've stenciled many different things, but yeah. I find myself using purples, greens, mm -hmm. pinks, like colors that like just do not But ever... you bought, and I know y'all have bought vinyls that you don't use. Uh, me. I always <laughs> yeah, do. Me yeah. too. So <laughs> use the ones that you're not really going to be using for other projects. Um, you just need to stay stuck to your tumbler while we do the yes. corrosive part of it. So the secret ingredient that we're going to be using is this ferric chloride so this is a it says on the front copper etchant solution this will etch copper you can see there's like lots of little warnings here poison corrosive um, so obviously when you're working with stuff like this you're going to need the proper ppe so things such as 
vinyl gloves, um, mask if you're not in a well-ventilated area, which we are, um, glasses, things like that, just to protect yourself. Um, we always want you all to stay safe when you're crafting. Um, and then you're also going to need some pure baking soda. So this is like our neutralizing agent. This basically works when we are done with everything. We're going to kind of put this over everything to neutralize it so it doesn't continue to like corrode the material that's beneath it. Hopefully Smart. that makes sense. So um, let's see. We've got a few other little things. You're going to need some um, cotton balls. So we have tried this with Q-tips, um, washcloths. I feel like this is the best way to do it, mainly because it's disposable. Like when you're done, you're done. It takes up enough room that you need to cover your entire stencil and things like that. Um, so cotton balls, I've got a bowl here. You can use a disposable bowl if you would like. Uh, this does wash out, like everything washes out. This is like a craft bowl, so we don't eat out of this bowl. Like get your designated craft bowl. I feel yeah. like if you're a grafter, you probably got a designated craft bowl somewhere. Um, I've got some painter's tape, I have a measuring tape, a weeding tool, a burnishing tool, so like your standard Cricut tools. And then I also have a piece of butcher paper down, I don't know if y'all can tell, but I've got paper down to protect We're the surface. It, yeah. yeah, we don't want to get this like on anything. And then I have just a standard grip Cricut mat, and I cleaned this mat. Aren't you not so proud of me? Look at you. Aren't you so proud? I cleaned it just for this. Well, I cleaned one yesterday, and I thought it's because you clean. watched my video. It it definitely was, and so <laughs> I was like, I need to clean a mat for today's vlog because it was just looking janky. And then I've already cut out our stencil, but I'm going to show you all how to make this stencil. Let me go overhead so you can see really good. I'm going to show you all how to make this little stencil. So we're going to do cheetah print. Isn't that Ooh. cute? Check I love it, out. it. Yes. So let's go ahead and go into design space. So we are in design space. Let's go ahead and open up our website. So we really need to start from the Makers Gonna Learn website. That's where you're gonna be able to retrieve all of the yummy files that we like to use. So I am on the home page. Let me get logged in really quick. So sign in. I love our website. It's like my yes. favorite. Yes. This is so we just updated. Well, I don't want to say uh, just over six oh, months ago. Has it been six months? Already? I don't know. October. It's been a few months. Um, but the new website Four is months. beautiful. Yes. So if you're new, this is our website. You can see we did this last week. Snow globe glass tumbler. I love gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. Um, we do lots of master classes for our members. Those are member only content. So you have to be a member to access any yes, of those. Yes, plus our 30 days to master your Cricut challenge. Mm -hmm. And we're honestly trying to figure out what new things our members want. So right. if you have a request, let us know. Um, there's quite a few different ideas we have going on. So let us know what you're really needing help with. We would love to have that conversation today. Absolutely. Um, if you're a member and if you're not a member, we just want to let you know that we want you to feel included. So Absolutely. be sure to share. Um, Carrie, we are still using ferric chloride today. You're just going to need baking soda to neutralize the ferric chloride, but the actual etching solution is ferric chloride. So you can see, first of all, look how cute these cheetah letters are. I have not used these on a craft yet, but I am dying to because they're so cute. Um, and I'm just like really obsessed with cheetah, period. So we're going to actually be using this file right here. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. It's going to pop into a zip folder down here. You can just double click that. And then we're going to double click the folder. And we are going to be using the SVG today. So let's open Design Space back up. I'm going to go to the far left, hit upload, and then we're going to hit upload image. And then I'm going to select my finder and just click and drag that cheetah print into design space. Now, if I'm going a little bit too fast for you all, we do this in the beginning of all of our videos and all of our videos are posted on our channel. So even though this yes. is a live stream, you're going to get to go back and watch it. So we're going to go ahead and upload that. You can see, see I already uploaded it earlier. And I'm going to just Can we just talk about how answer. easy it was to upload that? I mean, what was that, a like lot, 15 seconds flat or something? A lot of times we have people confused how our membership works in relation to Design Space. Mm -hmm. And it's that easy. It's that fluid. Um, it takes, I would say, an extra 10 to 15 seconds, um, which mm -hmm. creates a lot of value for you. So yes. if you are a Cricut Access member, 
you and we had this conversation last week. Was it last week? Your week before last? Week before last, yeah. Um, you know, Cricut Access, you don't have access to the file forever. Right. Or you've downloaded it now, you have that forever. You own it. You own it, you yeah. know, at least personal use, even if you cancel your membership. Mm -hmm. So if you're considering Makers Can Learn today, it can really be that easy. It really is. Okay. So when I pull it in, obviously our final result looks a lot different than this result. So right off the bat, I want to go ahead and just get the outlines of my spots. I don't necessarily want those brown spots in between the black. So when you pull this file in, it's grouped together as two layers. So I'm just going to hit this little button right here. This allows us to group and ungroup. I want to ungroup so that I can delete that brown layer. So you can see here, I can just select the brown layer. And I know that the brown layer is selected because right up here, you can see this brown is popping up and all you can do is hit delete so we just want the black outlines for this project it's just going to make it a lot easier we don't need to be etching both layers in this instance and then what we're going to do put a pause on design space let's go overhead and measure our cup so this is the part where we're going to be doing kind of like a full wrap on the top edge of this um, tumbler now, let me pause you. Kim has asked a question that actually I'm very interested in knowing too. So okay. I'm selfishly asking, where did we get that bottle of baking soda? <laughs> this is from Amazon. Oh my goodness. Amazon takes such good care of us. And I think I linked this one <gasps> because I thought this is great because it's not like the box ones that stay yeah. open. And it has like, um, it has, you can spoon it out or you can shake it out like a salt shaker. No way. Yeah. So this is pretty handy. Now I will say... This is a little bit different of a bottle, but oh no, no, we ordered this exact one, 12 ounces. Yeah, yeah, the bottle looks yeah. different now. Oh, but does if, it? But this is the same one we ordered, so I don't know if the picture's different, number one. Number two, it's a little bit more expensive than, Well, y'all know prices you know, on everything. You know, baking Go soda up. at the store, I don't know what it is right now, but at the store it used to be, you know, 60, 60 different, um, <laughs> you know, 60 different. Uh, Prices? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yes. 60 cents for a little container. Oh, yeah. So oh, gosh. We're also yeah. getting... Okay, so we measured the top portion of our cup. Now, if you were just putting a decal on this, you don't need to measure the entire circumference of the cup. You just want to measure the area that your decal is going to... or I'm sorry, that your stencil is going to be going into. So, if I just wanted to do it like right here on the front, I could do like a three by three and a half. Um, and my, my height... I don't want to go past this lip because it starts getting a little wonky when you get on this like curve, this curvature area. So I kind of stop at three and a half. So I'm going to do 10 and a half by three and a half because we are going to do a full wrap decal. So let's go back into design space. And what all I've done is pull in a basic square and I'm going to unlock my square. And then in the width box, I'm going to put 10 and a half by three and a half. Okay. So we've got our little square right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it over to the top left corner of this cheetah print. And we can select both of these. And we are going to align to the left. And we're going to align to the top. So this is nestled right up in this top left corner of our design. And then what I'm going to do is shrink. Uh-oh. Command Z. Uh -oh. Undo that. <laughs> I'm going to select the cheetah print just on its own, and I'm going to shrink it down to the exact width of our rectangle. So this cheetah print is technically a seamless pattern. Wow. So if I land it correctly and my measurements are perfect, then it should look like a seamless cheetah print pattern all the way around. Can we do it? We can do it. I believe in us. So um, that's why I'm shrinking my cheetah to fit within the width parameters of this rectangle. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is select both layers and we're going to hit slice. And what this is going to do is we can delete that. We don't need it anymore. Basically, we're just going to be left with these spots only. Okay. So now what I need to do, it looks done, right? Like it kind of looks finished, but it looks a little bit different than this one over here. So what I'm going to do I have saved the wrong cheetah print, first of all. Let's go back. You need to save the spots. So you need to save the, does that make sense? We don't yeah. want to save the negative space. We want to save the actual spots. 
So I've got my spots that I sliced out. And can we talk about, can you bring that back real quick, yeah. Alicia? Let's just talk about this real quick. So this right here, if you zoom in a little yeah, bit, let's zoom in. for everyone at home, look at how your little, at the bottom of the one that looks like a stencil, there's no way that, you know, if you applied that, you would be able to, you know, make sure that line is there properly. Right. So, there's not going to be, see right here beneath these spots, there's no cut lines. There yeah. Would, it would not, it would only cut up at that top area yeah. and then there would be no cut there. So you would have to manually, like with an X-Acto knife or something, go in and cut uh, it. Like painter's tape? I don't even know what you would do. Yeah, you know it I mean? would make it much more complicated. So we're go the negative, we're deleting it out. We yes. do not need the negative anymore. Let's just get And we can pick them. back right where you're at. Yeah. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create my stencil border around our cheetah print spots. So. Before we made a 10 and a half by three and a half rectangle. Now I'm going to create an 11 by four. So I'm giving myself a half inch allowance all the way around my cheetah print. So I'm pulled in my square. I'm going to unlock it again and we're going to make this 11 wide by four tall. And then I'm going to click and drag. So I've got both of my layers selected and we are going to center them. So you can't see the cheetah print. I'll send this to the back just so you all can see. Now the cheetah print is centered in our rectangle and I'm going to select both layers. I'm selecting both of the layers and I'm going to slice. Smart. So then we can remove all of this and we can delete it. And y'all, I know that I'm using slice when I could be using the new functions. Don't come at me, okay? <laughs> you can use the other functions. I think you could use subtract there yeah. or exclude. Um, but basically, Alicia, we just one day, it out. one day those functions are going to go away. I know, and then I'll have to learn. <laughs> no, I, I actually do it. I do do it when I'm by myself sometimes. It's just whatever my brain goes to yeah, first. Yeah, no worries. Oh, my gosh, we have such Okay, y'all, that's it. And you did then, it. Yeah, we did it. And so all you would do is just add, um, we've got our star mask stencil vinyl here. So um, if you all are have watched any of my stencil videos, I'm like a stencil maker. I just feel like I make stencils a lot. Um, but this is my favorite stencil vinyl. You can get this on the 143 vinyl website. So it's 143vinyl.com. And all you would do is just cut yourself a piece of vinyl that is at least 11 by 4. And probably needs to be like 12 by 5 at least. Right. Um, give yourself enough room and just line it up to this top edge. And I could just trim it right here. And then we're going to go back into design space. I'm going to hide one of these and you would go make it and you don't need to mirror your image with a stencil, nothing like that. I'm going to select continue and there is actually a stencil vinyl base material setting. So you can just type in stencil and I typically just use this basic stencil vinyl setting. I'll hit done, keep it on basic default pressure. We're going to be using a fine point blade Then you're going to load it into your mat and let it cut. And there you go. I love it. That's it. Now, let, I want to I want to pick on Alicia for a second. You can pick on me. It's so, okay. I'll allow it. A lot. The, some of the cool features of the new functions is that Alicia kind of made herself do a little bit more work. Yes. When you are still using Slice, um, like we've been accustomed to, mm -hmm. you had more work to do. There was more layers. It there was, keeps all the layers there keeps, that you yeah. cut through. So you yeah. cut through them and then you have to delete them out. And someone yes. asked a great question like, how many do you know you made? The What I do when I slice, when you click that slice button, you'll be fascinated to not keep your eyes on the canvas, mm -hmm. actually move your eyes to your layers panel. Yes. You will see three or four new layers appear mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. It's a really fun part of the show, like that. You, yeah. the training you could get. And the layers panel is so helpful. A lot of people I think are intimidated by the layers panel for some reason, yeah. but it can be very beneficial if you start learning how it works and how you can use it to your benefit, especially whenever you're moving layers around after you've united something. Right. Um, it's just, there's a lot of benefits to utilizing that layers panel. Yes. So after you've cut everything out, you are going to be weeding the spots out. So we are weeding out what we want to etch onto our tumbler. So if we did words, you are going to weed out the words. You will not weed around the words, you will weed the actual word out. Can I just say, if you're not paying attention and you're wanting to really learn stencils, 
come back to us. Yes. Come back to the show. Alicia, just repeat that one yeah. more time. Okay, so after you cut everything out, now this has already been completely weeded, but whenever you cut your stencil out, if you do words, if you do flowers, whatever it is, you are gonna weed out the portion of the stencil that you want to show up on your cup. So if you're doing words, like if you put I love you on your mug, you're gonna weed out the I, the love, and the you. You will not weed out the area around the words. Does that make sense to everybody? And then, especially on this little cheetah print that we've done, I have weeded out all of the spots. And you all know how earlier I was talking about if we had used the negative space for our stencil, how we wouldn't have cut lines beneath our cheetah print spots. You all can see here now, I have cut right here. So because I put that border, because I put that box around our cheetah print, it allowed me to actually cut out the entire spot rather than missing the bottoms of these spots wow. that get cut off. It's beautiful. So hopefully that makes sense to you all. And I have already weeded, honestly, because this would have taken me forever to do another <laughs> live stream. So I went ahead and weeded it. And then I used the Caesar um, transfer tape. That's my favorite transfer tape. Um, but use whatever you've got on hand. Y'all know me and Alicia also can debate that. <laughs> uh, Tanner likes the masking. I like masking paper transfer tape a yes. lot. It's very affordable. It is. This is a little bit more bougie. <laughs> it is a little bit more bougie, and it doesn't. You can work treat with... yourself though. Yeah, treat yourself. I use it all the time. It's my favorite. I keep a roll of this, like like a five foot roll of this on deck. That's awesome. Okay, so before we start doing anything, I'm gonna make sure. Um, I already actually did this before we came on, but you need to make sure. Hold on, let me make sure I'm in center before I start showing y'all. Make sure that you have cleaned your entire thing with rubbing alcohol. You can just take a paper towel and clean it with rubbing alcohol really well. And y'all, I don't know what the Dollar Tree was thinking. And I don't know if y'all can even see it. Can you see the square right here where the price tag was? Oh. I'm so bothered by that. Yeah. So normally their price stickers are on the bottom when I buy these, but for some reason, they thought it would be smart to put it right there. And now you can see where it was. And I don't know why I have cleaned the dickens out of this. <laughs> I have cleaned it and cleaned it and it won't come off. Huh. But that's fine. We're etching and no one's going to know. No one's going to be able to see it. So clean it with alcohol, just rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. Just wipe it off really good to make sure there's no like debris or oil from fingerprints and things like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply my stencil. We're about to get into the fun part. So I'm just gonna pull this backing off. And I'm hoping that this lines up really well. I would love to have a seamless. I would um, love that for you too, Alicia. Me too, but you know, y'all know, if you're a crafter, you know mm -hmm. it don't always work out like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm already making a rookie mistake, y'all. What gonna, did you do? Okay, so I'm gonna keep this on here. <gasps> and in order for me to fully wrap it around, I'm gonna flip it over to the back. And I'm just going to bend this back right here. So I'm just bending back a little bit of that backer, about an inch. And then I'm gonna line this up with the edge of my tumbler. Can y'all see this? If my head starts getting in the way, you tell me, Sadie. I mean, we have to sacrifice sometimes <laughs> for perfection. I know, and I want it to look good. So I'm just gonna line the top edge of my stencil. I'm going to line that up with the top edge of my, so just like that, okay, got my burnishing, tool, another burnishing tool on hand, and I'm going to come underneath here and kind of pull this down, Okay. and I'm going to burnish as I go. I'm going to move that to the side. Let's just burnish as we go. We oh, want to make sure nervous. everything sticks down really well, okay? Now, for the chloride, mm -hmm. do you recommend goggles? Um, I would wear safety, yes, I would wear some type of eye protection. Okay, perfect. Okay, this is already crooked. Alicia, no. But you know what? This is why I really like using stencil vinyl because look, it's just kind of coming up. It's a lot, it's going to allow me to kind of move and adjust if I need to. Um, but like if you were using permanent vinyl, I can't promise y'all that it, that would work for you. Wow. So I'm just gonna, if I try to be too perfect with this, I'm gonna mess up. So y'all just let me live my life. I'm gonna put this on here. I'm really bad at doing things like well and accurate. Anyway, so I'm just trying to get this right. So now I'm, my other technique is to just go in, I'm putting the middle portion here and I'm trying to get it down 
as straight as I possibly can. Bear with me, everybody. It's going to be worth it in the end. You know what I'm saying? I'm really trying. And I swear, it's making me feel, y'all, if you guys have ever done tapered tumblers, it feels like I'm working on a tapered tumbler, but I'm not. This is not tapered. But it doesn't want to lay flat for me. I mean, Alicia, we did get it at the Dollar Tree. I know, but, oh, I know, but it still should lay pretty flat. So maybe it was my bad trying to do a full wrap on this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we're really lucky because this vinyl is coming up so and people Easily. just want to let you know you've lost a piece or two of your stencil. I, I only know. lost one piece, oh. okay? Oh, <laughs> okay. I only Alicia, lost one. Alicia knows. <laughs> I know, I know. It's okay. They're cheetah print spots, so they're not perfect. Yes, exactly. So, okay. Let's let's do this, you guys. This is the last time I'm trying it. If it's a little off, we're just going to, like, work with it. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to do it. So, I'm going to turn it this way. We're going to try to get this as straight as humanly possible, taking any and all constructive Alicia, criticism. Alicia, just pretend that you are in the craft room. You don't have hundreds of people watching you. You're just, no it's just pressure. you. No pressure. It's just you. <laughs> have a craft fill. It's the nature week. of crafting is making mistakes. It's just how it is. Yes, I okay. love it. You know what? This is, we're committed to this. This is what we're doing here. So, Okay, our stencil is down. It is very lumpy, but we're going to just work with it. So I'm going to go ahead and squeegee everything down. Before I remove my transfer tape, I'm going to squeegee this down. The main thing is that you don't want your ferric chloride leaking underneath your stencil. So I'm just going to kind of take my burnishing tool, and I'm going to flatten it down as well as I can. And I'm going to have a few bumps here and there. But y'all, the I really like this technique, especially with a pattern like cheetah print, because it's kind of mistake proof. Like I, you're not going to be able to tell, even though that my vinyl isn't laid down great, you're not going to be able to tell it after we apply it, the um, ferric chloride and like do the actual etching, if that makes sense. Right. So this over here looks really rough, but we are going to make it work. Okay, I promise. So we're going to pull this off. Now this front side looks great. This is good. Okay. Pull this all the way off. You're doing it, Alicia. You got this. We committed. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now that it's off, you can see like there's a couple little bubbles and stuff. I'm just gonna kinda go through here and flatten all of this out. Okay. So we are getting there. And you really want to make sure that this is down because anywhere that that ferric chloride goes, it could very well leak underneath. Okay. These are ugly. Just <laughs> turn a blind eye. Turn a blind yeah, eye. Yeah. That's the cool part. with So patterns like this, is they're very forgiving. They are. And you're going to have really great results with this. Now, if you were trying to do something that was like very, like perfectly symmetrical, like an, I think of like an Aztec design or something. Um, it wouldn't be nearly as forgiving, but cheetah print is very organic shapes. And so that allows us to kind of make a few more little mistakes. Now I could sit here for like 30 more minutes and make this perfect, but, but like, we're, we're on a show. We're living <laughs> it up. Right. And I don't want to bore you all with trying to get this line. People are just having a lot of anxiety on, for your behalf. <laughs> um, I'm just well, like, well, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> So You're funny. the entertainment today, Alicia. No, we're <laughs> fine, you guys. Everything's fine. Everything's okay? fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, this actually did not do as bad as I thought. Now, this is, this is not great, but you know what? We can't all be perfect. Yeah. Okay? You're right. <laughs> you are absolutely right, Alicia. So, now that I have gotten everything down, I've kind of got all of the bubbles out, especially around your spots. You want to make sure all of the bubbles are out that you can get. And then what we're going to do, I'm just going to sit this right here on my burnishing tool. Okay. So this, the burnishing tool trick just kind of allows us to have stability on our cup while we're working. And the next thing that we want to do is put on our PPE. So I'm going to go ahead and put yes. on all of that. Listen at the nurse and you talking. PPE, protect, personal protective equipment. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got gloves, glasses, everything that you need to put on. We're in a big area, so make sure you're in like a well-ventilated area. Yes, to our do previous this. studio or two just wouldn't have 
done near as much. This is such it. a beautiful space that we have. Like, we're so blessed. So thank you guys. Yes. Okay. So I've got this open, ready to go. And I'm you said cotton balls is your favorite. Yes. Cotton balls is the best way to get like even um, coverage without getting too much on it um, because we're going to be applying it in layers. So another thing that I'm going to do is I am going to just add a piece of tape to the bottom of this cheetah print design. I'm just going to add some be mainly because I just want to avoid getting any of this ferric chloride on the bottom portion of my tumbler. Okay, so this is just to protect our cup from getting any ferric chloride where we don't want it. Okay, wind up with my janky. I love that. Varnish. Now, other people are also agreeing with you that the top part is tapered. So, like, they don't think you're crazy. They it has actually to be. Thinks. It has to be. <laughs> it has to be. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. It has to be tapered because that's why whenever you do a non-tapered stencil, mm -hmm. it will bow up like that at the Tell top. Tell Alicia. So oh. it's not me. It's you. <laughs> it's the cup. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my little cotton balls. I like to just kind of have a pile. Yeah. You know, because I don't want to be dipping my hand back into right, the cotton right, ball. Right. So what we're going to do is start by adding a nice thin layer of this. So we're going to go ahead and get some of this onto our cotton ball, being very careful. And we're just going to go ahead and start adding this on top of our stencil. Wow. Yeah. So good thin layer. We're going to do like five coats of this. So we're applying it all over. And honestly, be really careful. If you don't apply um, tape to the top edge, be careful there if any of it's exposed. Love that. Okay. And after she gets done with this, we will show you all the uh, finished one for sure. Oh, yeah. We're not going to go through all this with you and not show you the finished product. Yeah. So I'm just going to apply this all over. Okay. Does anybody have questions so far? People are saying, uh, Carol specifically stated, the angle from above shows how the tumbler is angled, not cray cray. And okay. then Michelle says the top is tapered. If you line it up at the top and work downwards rather than around, it's easier to line up the stencil. Honestly, y'all, if I had even one little hankering that it was um, tapered, I would have shown you all a different way to do a stencil. Actually, I probably wouldn't have done a full wrap. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. It's very hard when you have tapered cups to do a full wrap. So yes. just be careful and mindful of that. Absolutely. What and are I, they doing? Just Tumblr? Melody, we are teaching how to um, use this chloride on an amazing Dollar Tree. We're yes. etching it. We're stainless etching steel. stainless steel and we're using corrosive chemicals. Yeah. We're wild like that. We're wild. It's actually just ferric chloride. It sounds fancy, but you could buy it on Amazon. It's so cool. <laughs> so, and there's a couple where it's overlapped. I'm going to not do this one and like these two. I'm going to skip those because I, they're like kind of weird looking and I don't feel like it looks like a complete cheetah spot. So I'm right. going to avoid those. Aw, um, Megan is completely swamped, but she's still enjoying getting to listen to Maker's Corner. Megan, so Megan. good to see you. Always here hanging out with us. Yes. Hey, that was what coat number three. Yeah, we got two more. Two more. We are almost there. And you welcome can see, all our new friends. Can y'all see like what's happening here? Yeah, it's so this? good. It's darker than this bottom area, so it's already starting to etch, which is so cool to see. And it's really gonna blow your mind when I pull a stencil off. I'm be shocked. Like, Dang. Okay, so we're just gonna keep on going. And also, I want to say I've got a clean hand and a dirty hand. If you're a nurse, you know that that's a rule in a sterile field. Wait, what? I've got a clean hand and a dirty hand. Oh. So your dirty hand does the job, and your clean hand stays sterile and clean wow. for other things. We're yeah. learning. Yes. Who knew this would be a medical lesson? I love it. <laughs> 
So I'm just dabbing this on. This is our fourth coat. And I've only went through like six or seven little cotton balls. That's yeah, all bad. No, it's really not bad. I feel like if y'all can get your hands on ferric chloride, you probably already have everything it takes to make this. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So, and I was saying earlier, you don't want to get too much of this ferric chloride on your cotton ball. Just enough. You need just enough to put a thin coat on it. So don't like get crazy. Love it. Yeah. And also I'm using a burnishing tool. I probably should have used like an older burnishing tool um, because I'm getting a little bit on here, but it doesn't really erode plastic. <laughs> so I don't, I think I can just rinse that off and it'll be totally fine. Okay. This is our last coat. Yeah. I can tell it's working really well though. So I love it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. You're awesome. Okay. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm a little nervous about this back edge, but like I feel like it's going to be better than I think it is in my brain. Like yes. I feel like I'm getting nervous for no reason because I think it's going to work just fine. Other than maybe having a couple holes. But okay, so this is five coats. You guys can tell an obvious difference from the stainless steel at the top of our tumbler versus the stainless steel at the bottom of our tumbler. This is much more shiny. This is going to be a lot darker and dulled down, and that means that the ferric acid is working. Love um, it. This acid is not just for stainless steel. You can use this on copper. Um, what else? There's other, uh, There's like brass. Others. Yeah. Brass. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to let Tanner talk to you guys. I'm going to go rinse this off Ooh. in the sink, and then we will reveal it together. I'm so excited. Okay. So, Before I go, I'm going to... I not, was wondering when you were going to bring this into the picture. Not only am I going to put this baking soda on my cup, but I'm going to put it in this bowl um, to neutralize any of the ferric chloride on my cotton balls. I'm also going to put water on this before I throw these away. I do not want to throw these in the trash can like this. Okay. Wait, can you tell me why? Because this is an acid and it's corrosive and it'll eat through. Lord knows that what's in your trash scary. can. That scary. Yeah, so you want to neutralize it with baking soda, and then you want to neutralize it even more with water. Wow. And then, so I'm going to take this baking soda, and we're going to do the same thing all over our tumbler. So this part can be a little bit messy, but that's why we have butcher's tape all. Yes. And this is going to stop that corrosive process. Too. Now, does this work on glass? You, so you can use Armor Edge for glass. I would not recommend ferric okay, chloride I didn't, I didn't on think glass. So. Yeah. You can etch glass, just not with ferric chloride. Okay, everybody, are you ready? Are Ooh, you guys excited? I'm ready. Okay. I can already tell. Okay, you can. Okay, and when you first rinse it off, you're gonna be like, it didn't work, it didn't yeah. work. And every time I do this, I'm like, it didn't work. And I'm like, I just trick myself every time. So let's go ahead and start peeling this off. This is completely cleaned. I cleaned everything off. Y'all, can you see? Can you see Oh, this? snap. I just want to say I'm starting with the ugly section, and it, already, <laughs> and it already looks good, okay? Oh, I love it. Okay, so we're just pulling this totally off. Wow. Look how cute. Wow. I mean, you can so you can see there's like a few little holes there, but like, wow. let's take our weeding tool and just be careful not to scratch your um, stainless steel, but I'm just going to kind of pull this up. Right. Get off all of these centers. That is so exciting. What do y'all think? Is that not the coolest I'm thing? I'm highly impressed. Every time I do this, I'm like, dang, that's cool. It. I'm always very impressed by this type of craft. I love it. That is so awesome. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the cheetah print. This is the just a decal one, which is going to be easier. It's a better starter project, yes. I think, rather than doing a full wrap. For so, sure. Now, Cute. I do want to let you guys know, this is on here forever, right? Yeah, like, this there's is, no, it never goes away. Never going away, never. Yeah. <gasps> Look at it. Yes. Oh, now, wow. this backside needs a little bit of help, but you, I can totally go back in with some little individual chia yes. spots and etch those on there. I love it. Um, I mean, but now we know that these are slightly tapered. Yeah. Um, and then, but the this, regular decal, like, it's pretty mistake proof. Like, you yeah. can't really mess that up. That's awesome. And yeah. I mean, for a cotton ball, someone <laughs> asked why you needed so many cotton balls. Um, 
I mean, it, to each their own. Each their own. You could use little more. It starts getting very saturated. Yeah. So like, and you don't want it to be super heavy whenever you're right. applying your layers. So I was kind of getting a new cotton ball every so often because yes. I didn't want it to be like full of right. that chloride. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. You don't want it to um, be too saturated and potentially get underneath and your like mask. Run. Or your stencil. Yeah. You need yeah, a yeah, very yeah. good thin even yes. coat on these. And someone said this would be great for a flask. This would be perfect yes. for a flask. For I doing agree. any type of wedding gifts, things like that, so monogrammed cute. ones, or you know something yeah. really cool on there. That's that a would great be idea. Perfect. Yeah, groomsmen gifts. That would be